The new update for Transport Fever 2 has just dropped and let me tell you now, it's incredible. In this video we're covering all the new features that are in the game and they are going to blow you away. They get more and more crazy as we go through the video so you want to stick around to hear the ones at the end as well as the ones at the start. So here we are at the main yard on my personal save game and in this map I'm going to be showing you all of the new features. Let's start out with one of the most highly requested things and that's actually going to come from console players who are always requesting how the hell do I download mods because I'm always making videos showing the best ways to get mods and the best kind of mods but a lot of players of this game can't actually get mods because they're on console. Now that's all changed. So here's some footage from Urban Games, the creators of Transport Fever 2. You can now download mods, the same sort of mods on Steam but on console using a thing called mod.io. And this is a website that exists across many games that has recently come about allowing games to do cross-platform modding. And I think this is going to be incredible to allow more players to kind of enjoy the game as well for a longer amount of time because a lot of this game is actually about user-generated content because there's a lot of different vehicles and scenarios you can play with created by players. The game's kind of your oyster when it comes to mods, but Xbox and PlayStation have kind of been struggling with that. Now, I will say, now this is available on Xbox and PlayStation, it's only available on the new generation because the old gen isn't powerful enough for mods. And I warn you as well, in new gen, you want to have a very low number of mods as well because if you put a high number of mods on the new gen, it's also going to struggle as they aren't that powerful. And another amazing thing that comes with console, you can now share your save games. If you've got a friend who plays Transport Fever 2, you can now share your game. You can play on the same save if you want to. Not at the same time, but you can share it with your friends and that's awesome. Same time, I'm expecting that from Transport Fever 3. It's probably going to happen. I'm really hoping it will. But for Transport Fever 2, you can only save them. We're not doing multiplayer just yet. But let's now jump onto something that is across platform for all players is going to change, including PC. And that's going to be the new gridding system. And if you've ever played City Skylines, you'll like know exactly what I mean. So the grid system, when you place down a road or a bit of track, you can click somewhere and it's going to add 45 degree and 90 degree angles to the roads so you can get perfectly aligned roads. And they actually snap together as well. It's, it kind of automatically snaps like that, as you can see. And this can allow you to make perfect, seamless roads. Whereas before this, you had to kind of guess whereabouts you were going to go. Now you can actually just go ahead, place down your road, and you can automatically get a straight road. And if you're not happy with the road like this, you can get a straight road off this broken bit of road and then you can delete the broken bit and replace it and then that is literally 100% perfectly straight amazing. Same can be said for tracks as well you can do exactly the same thing with this you can go ahead and build off this and this is allowing you to do 90 degree and 45 degree connections and it kind of is a really good guide to show you exactly how far you're going because it automatically snaps like the roads on the corners so you can keep these lines straight. So what would happen before is you would try and go ahead and make a circle that is going to be parallel to this track but you would kind of misjudge it a little bit and you'd end up with something a bit like this where the tracks aren't quite straight and they're kind of a little bit curvy uh, and they're not quite in line which is obviously not good if you like your aesthetics. So that's really useful tools and another thing that goes along with this you can also now select bridges and tunnels by just clicking them and then you can change the bridge type just like that. It's so, so easy and it saves you from deleting the bridges and replacing it like you used to have to do, which was so unfortunate. Now you can literally just click stuff and it will do it for you. Amazing. And on top of this, it also classes stations as they have roads and connections to be able to be using the parallel mode. So if I go and select a station here and then go towards this road, it will automatically connect it up just like that. And if you don't want to do this, you can also hold down the shift button and then it will remove snapping. So it won't do this. This is me holding shift right now. And then when I let go, it's going to snap automatically. And I think that's something that a lot of people are also going to struggle with because sometimes you do need a bit more precision when you're placing down your stations like this if you want to be aesthetic, which just means to make it look nice. But sometimes it's just best if you can just snap and immediately be quick placing them down. A lot of players are going to find that really useful. So good job, guys. And so another brand new feature, you can now make roads that are parallel to other roads. And this is really useful. For example, here, I had this connected up like this, but these two junctions were too close and it was causing traffic. So instead, I'm going to make this road go parallel to this road, just like that, and bring it a bit further down here before I connect it up to the main artery here. This is also really useful for stuff like highways. I spent absolutely hours putting this together, and now you can simply grab a highway off the list, place it down, and then like tracks with a new highway, you can go right next to it till it goes blue, and then drag along, and you have perfectly symmetrical highways. Awesome. And now another thing this means is that roundabouts don't have to be clunky and massive like this, because cars can actually change lanes now, they haven't got to stick to one lane, whereas before they would have to come in and then choose a lane at the start, they can now choose a lane as they're going round. So this means we can have much smaller roundabouts with much more lanes. Let me show you an example. It's deleted. We'll go to our street constructors and grab a roundabout. 
I'll make the inner circle a little bit bigger than nothing just because it wouldn't fit without, uh, but not huge. We'll put it in here with a nice two number of lanes. I'm gonna connect that up to here. I, I'm gonna at least for now just plug it in direct and see what happens. And then we'll connect all the others too. So as you can see, this is looking quite smooth as that one's just changed for example, but we're also struggling entering the roundabout, which is an easy fix. To do this, we're gonna delete our exits and entrances and we'll just make slip lanes instead like we had before on the original meta design. Now that's looking really interesting, a lot better design and more simple than the last one. So I think this is good, especially for new users who haven't played the game very long. We can simply go to the street constructors and put one down, really cool. And the last thing I'm talking about connections for rail and road is you can now do three way switches. If we place down a bit of track and then make a switch just like that. So what you have to do before is you kind of have to make a little parallel track like that and then come off. And that was how you would do a three way track. But now all you have to do simply is go to the point, select it, drag it out, and there you go, you've got yourself a three-way switch. And they were impossible in the game before. So this whole video has taken place in this cargo yard, but most people make a lot of mistakes with cargo. And that's why that you need to watch this video, which is the best station, hands down, in Transport Fever 2 for efficiency and profit. Check it out.